Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at uh, Weighted Average Cost of Capital or WAC uh, and how to compute this. Uh, this is an important concept for uh, calculating the cost of capital for cash flows in a lot of uh, companies. So let's see how to compute this. So to get started, let's take an actual company, Delta Airways. And uh, let's say it has this many shares outstanding and you can find this from websites such as Google. So on Google Finance, you have, for example, 839.41 million shares outstanding. And uh, today's price per share is uh, $44.10. The total market value for all equity is therefore the product of price per share times the total number of shares outstanding. And you can also get information on the total debt that the company has, which is around $10 billion here. So the market value of equity is 37 billion and the market value of debt is 10 billion. Assume that the cost of equity is 15% and the cost of debt is 6%. Now let me explain the cost of debt first. This is basically typically the interest rate that is applied to this debt that Delta Airways pays out every year. So I'm just making an assumption here that it's 6%, but it could be whatever it is that the lenders will charge. So that will be the cost of debt. The cost of equity is slightly more complicated. We'll take a look at this, how to arrive at the cost of equity in more detail in a next video. But right now, let's just assume it is 15%. The basic principle for the weighted average cost of capital is to take the market value of equity as a proportion of the total market value of equity and debt and multiply that by the cost of equity and do the same thing for the cost of debt. So uh, for the moment, just ignore the tax rate and I will just construct this formula here. So what I do is I first use the market value of equity divided by the sum of the market value of equity plus debt times the cost of equity plus I do the same thing with debt um, divided by equity plus debt. I'll put a parenthesis here and then times the cost of debt. We are weighting the cost of equity by the proportion of equity in the total value of the company. And we are weighting the cost of debt by the, the proportion that debt makes up of the total value of the company. And that sum is the weighted average cost of capital. We need to make an adjustment for the tax rate. Now, basically the notion is that this interest rate that you're paying out that Delta Airways is paying out every year of 6% is before tax. They get to save 35% on whatever interest they're paying out out of the 6%. So for every $100 um, of debt, they pay $6 as interest, but that $6 comes out before they pay tax. So basically, it's as if they're only paying 65% um, of the 6%. So one minus the tax rate. So basically what we're doing is we are multiplying the cost of debt by uh, one minus the tax rate, which represents the tax savings arising because this interest, which is the cost of debt, is paid out before the company pays tax. So if you press enter, that then is the weighted average cost of capital for Delta Airways. And you can see that this weighted average cost of capital will actually increase or decrease depending on the relative proportions of the market values of equity and debt. Right now it's kind of weighted closer towards 15% because as you can see, the equity constitutes a larger amount of the, of the total value of the company. But if the equity were to decrease, supposing the share price were to drop to $5 per share, the total debt value constitutes a much bigger fraction of the total value of the company. And so you can see that the weighted average cost of capital tends closer towards the cost of debt. I just want to make a couple of observations. Um, what do you use the weighted average cost of capital for? Delta Airways could use the weighted average cost of capital to discount future cash flows arising from say the purchase of an airplane. If it wants to buy an airplane, which is part of its regular business, then it can use this weighted average cost of capital to estimate whether buying the airplane makes financial sense. To estimate whether buying the airplane will result in a net 
uh, present value that is positive okay and so whether it should buy the airplane or not now that would be an example of a completely appropriate use of the weighted average cost of capital and the reason it's appropriate is because the weighted average cost of capital represents the core business that delta airways is in it represents the core the riskiness of its core business as represented by the riskiness of its equity and and riskiness of its debt and as long as delta airways is considering making a purchase that is part of its core business then it can continue to use the weighted average cost of capital an example of an inappropriate use of the weighted average cost of capital would be if delta airways were to purchase let's say um a fast food chain okay so maybe delta airways wants to buy mcdonalds delta airways should not use this weighted average cost of capital because the riskiness of the cash flows associated with uh, the fast food industry is different from the riskiness associated with the airline industry so that would be an inappropriate use of the weighted average cost of capital not only that when this company is trying to acquire another company that other company will have a different profile of debt and equity and so that will affect the riskiness of the cash flows of the companies after they are merged so that is another reason why you don't want to use the weighted average cost of capital for unrelated purchases or unrelated acquisitions that might uh, uh, you know represent a different uh, degree of riskiness or a different you know debt equity uh, ratio uh, in the company